Hello, Eric Francis here, editor of Planet Waves and host of Planet Waves FM. Uh, I have just finished writing Monday Morning Horoscope number 180. I've written a lot more than 180 horoscopes, but this is the 180th consecutive horoscope on a Monday morning for a Monday morning. That would be this coming Monday the 10th, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the chart for that and what went into uh, the uh, conversation I had with myself that uh, resulted in 12 different sign interpretations. Uh, this is going to be a very unusual week uh, because, as you may know, Mars is in the sign Cancer, and uh, that means that Mars, which is a very energized uh, kind of a planet, is about to make a square to Eris, also quite an energetic planet, and an opposition to the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Uh, so what we have here is one of those situations where an inner planet comes into contact with outer planets and brings out the nature of those outer planets. Uh, what, uh, from, from my study of history and reading a lot of charts of historical events and, and of people, uh, one thing I've learned is that there is this dynamic between the inner and the outer planets where the outer planets are uh, basically involved in a setup of the background conditions and, uh, and, and describing what is possible, what, is, uh, what, is, what exists in potential, and uh, guiding society in very l large, sweeping, and sometimes difficult to notice ways. And then an inner planet comes along and uh, and makes an aspect to the outer planet set up and then brings the whole thing into a, a level of reality that we can actually see, feel, and experience. So uh, anybody who follows astrology should be aware, whether you are or not, that, uh, that there is a uh, an alignment of planets taking place uh, in late Capricorn right now. Uh, Pluto's been in Capricorn since early 2008. Saturn's been in Capricorn since um, late 2017. And the south node has been in Capricorn how long? Uh, I guess for about nine months. So the, 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 the nodes move uh, the most quickly. And, and by the way, in case you're wondering, what the nodes tell us is that there's going to be eclipses near where the nodes are. So setting that aside for a moment, let's just talk about the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, um, which is one of those slowly developing events. Uh, it's a, a thing that I think is um, in, in effect and developing all through the time that Saturn is in Capricorn. And that, uh, that therefore uh, began in, again, late 17, and then extends all the way out uh, into late 2020. And the main event of the conjunction takes place on January 12, 2020. So the year 2020 begins with a, a rather rare conjunction. The last time this happened was in the early 1980s, right at the beginning of the Reagan Revolution. And, uh, and then the, the Saturn-Pluto cycle is approximately a 37- uh, or 38-year cycle, depending on uh, what... May, may vary a little bit at the different times in history because Pluto has an orbit that uh, that varies somewhat from uh, from decade to decade and century to century. All right, so what we have is uh, a conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, and Capricorn is a sign that is associated with uh, what you might think of the most dense layer of the structure of society. It's kind of like the bedrock energetically on which physical society and uh, many concepts and many of society's institutions uh, are all built. It encompasses things like tradition and family and the government and, and corporations, and also to some extent the physical structures that support these things. And Pluto, uh, m moving through Capricorn, has uh, kind of done quite a bit of damage to these things, and we consequently live uh, now about 11, 12 years into the conjunction in a uh, time when things just seem incredibly unstable. And I would uh, note that at the beginning of, of this transit, Pluto through Capricorn, the first thing that we experienced was 
if you recall, the subprime mortgage crisis becoming the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. So there was kind of an economic collapse that happened and um, more or less restructuring, uh, it, depending on where and, and when, and you know, more or less, um, you know, robber baron stealing things and large, vast oceans of money and the TARP bailout and, and all of that, uh, resulting in a kind of newly formed economy that seems to work better for the people at the very top than it does for the people at the very bottom. So there's been this uh, massive recovery for people at the top and uh, corporate profits in the stock market doing phenomenal. And then uh, in, in, in the middle and at the bottom, there has been very little movement, very little progress. Uh, so that that's um, p- part of the story of of Pluto and Capricorn. And so that's it's it's a it's a factor that's been on one level it's been destructive, and then on another level there's been some reconstruction uh, going on. And uh, and then Saturn entered uh, Capricorn in late 2017, beginning a whole new phase of uh, of Pluto through Capricorn. And, uh, and, and that's where we are now. And where we're at is this conjunction is getting very close uh, and in, in both time and in distance. And now there is a, a new factor that is about to come along and make an opposition to that. So when you think of this, uh, this cluster of planets, uh, Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn retrograde and also conjunct the south node, you've got a setup that's uh, very heavily... Um, concentrated on the past. You have a setup that is um, concentrated uh, in general with a a kind of a maximum density feeling to it, but also an explosive quality uh, because Pluto is the unstoppable force and Saturn is the uh, the immovable boundary. And so when you take, take the unstoppable force and you combine it with the immovable boundary, you get some kind of a, an explosive thing. And that that tends to be what happens when Saturn and Pluto align in uh, in in a, um, a hard aspect, ninety degrees, one hundred eighty degrees, or or a conjunction. And uh, th- there are p- political uh, trends that tend to be about things getting denser uh, at these times. There seems there seems to be a uh, it's often a regressive movement, and uh, fear is a, a factor under uh, under heavy Saturn Pluto aspects and then uh, the explosive part happening such as for example under the last Saturn Pluto major aspect uh, that was the opposition in 2001 and uh, and 2002 uh, right at the beginning of the millennium and right at the beginning of the Cheney Bush administration uh, there was a lot of uh, weird bad political stuff that happened and uh, and wars begun that have in fact yet to end 19 years later so uh, th- these are aspects to proceed with caution around but here's what happens this week because the whole thing moves from the background into the foreground this week when mars makes an opposition uh to this whole setup which is going to be going on uh all uh, all through uh this week and then well into the end of the month, but it starts to really come into focus uh, the, the week of um, Jan- of June 10th and then uh, stay in focus for approximately the next 12 days. So Saturn will first make a conjunction to the North Node and an opposition to the South Node, then it will make a an opposition to Saturn, then it will make an opposition to Pluto. Look up the Saturn-Pluto uh, opposition in, in any astrology book, and you can just kind of use it to heat your coffee up. And then finally, Saturn, uh, Mars rather, will make a square to Eris in Aries. So basically, Mars is coming along like kind of a blasting cap and is, uh, is, is going to one stage at a time set off this aspect pattern which by the way you know is a, a long standing one that holds for years particularly the pluto eris square something we've never uh, lived with or never experienced before and that and that one is going to go on for quite a while and by the way for those who are uh, astrology fans uh, you you probably know this is all mingled up with the united states 
Pluto return, uh, which is exact around 2024, but which we are fully in right now. So what I'm saying here is this week we're going to get a real taste of what all of this uh, high-density, super-powered astrology in the background is about this week and, and then through uh, into the summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere. So looking at about a couple of weeks of this uh, that will be interesting. And uh, Mars is a planet that's very um, personally, you know, necessary, first of all, and intimate and familiar with us. And so the uh, the thing to be mindful of uh, is your anger level, your frustration level, and uh, and how you respond to adversity. So pay attention. Uh, and r respond to adversity appropriately. Uh, incidentally, I am teaching a, a class, n not exactly on this topic, but on a, a related topic, uh, Key Life Transits class, which is um, going to be uh, two Mondays, Monday the 10th and Monday the 17th. If you are interested in that, drop me an email at CS, as in customer service, at Planet Waves. Excuse me, hiccuping. CS at Planet Waves. Net. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you on Sunday with another edition of Planet Waves FM at planetwaves.fm. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.